Welcome back to First Class Film Sessions. This is episode number five. Today we will be breaking down Maryland University. While Big Ten rival Penn State and near neighbor Loyola have grabbed headlines this season, one thing is clear. Maryland lacrosse is in the mix, at the top, again. Currently in the top five, Maryland has been consistent throughout the season, and Jared Bernhardt has stepped into the void left by the last Maryland number one, Connor Kelly, to lead a balanced Terp offense. PLL analyst Joe Keegan often talks about how lacrosse is following basketball's lead towards a positionless game. This means players filling multiple roles within an offense, dodger, scorer, creator, and more. Versatile players blur the lines between your typical feeding attackman and downhill dodging midfielder. We are going to break down Maryland's positionless style of lacrosse within their pairs offense and the impact of Jared Bernhardt. A huge reason for the success of this offense is number one, Jared Bernhardt. A dynamic playmaker and slasher to the net, Bernhardt makes plays happen. Quick restarts off the end line, two-man game, and step-down shots, Bernhardt scores in a variety of ways. He can play with or without the ball. When he picks it up off the end line, Jared Bernhardt is a big-time threat. Maryland often sets razor picks or down picks to help free his hands for up-the-hash shots or finishes around the cage. The versatility and athleticism of Bernhardt sets the tone for Maryland's positionless style of offense and creates matchup nightmares all over the field. The shape of Maryland's offense typically starts in one of two ways. A pure pairs look with pairs on each wing and two base players that work together around the crease or a three out look with two inside and one behind, drawing similarities to a 1-4-1. Though the setup is slightly different, both initial sets tend to mold into the same positionless style offense that features a heavy two man game and players constantly exchanging between high and low spots. The first clip demonstrates the pair's offense on the most simple level. Pair's action ball side and then switching fields to attack on the opposite side. Here, Anthony DeMeo dodges the alley while Logan Wisnowskis mirrors the dodge. As the pole hedges, DeMeo hits the throwback to Logan. He quickly flips the field and Snyder attacks with similar action down the alley as Bernhardt sets a hard pick but no switch is caused. Since the defender hedges too much, he is late to recover and Bernhardt's hands are free for a step down look. Though they don't score a goal in this next clip, it shows how the offense begins to evolve and mesh together. Starting with the same two man game in a pass down pick down scenario, the offense begins to weave, attacking passes and exchanging towards the middle of the field. This happens until eventually, Rucker slides adjacent and Maryland can hit an easy fade look for an open time and room shot. The players are not concerned with spots, but continuously flow together. This next clip demonstrates similar action, but Wisnaskis finds a flashing cutter from the base after attacking the middle of the field. They score in a weave setup versus Penn State after the initial pair's look. Bubba Fairman takes the middle and passes across to Bernhardt for the weave. As Bernhardt moves it and DeMaio dodges underneath, the pole leaves to slide, leaving Bernhardt for the time and room underhand step down. The positionless style is evident in this next goal clip in a big matchup versus North Carolina. Note how Wisnaskis begins at X and Bernhardt begins in the left alley pair. As Snyder dodges, he comfortably carries through X and swings the ball. Wisnaskis rotates through to a pair in the right alley and Bernhardt replaces Snyder's original spot. The pair's action continues, but this time Bernhardt gets the middle, passes it off, and eventually gets the ball back on a throwback pass from Wisnaskis. The ball eventually makes its way back to Wisnaskis for a righty alley goal off the dodge. In that sequence alone, Bernhardt plays in four different spots in the offense and Wisnaskis plays in three. This versatility makes them extremely difficult to defend. Again, note here how Wisnaskis starts in the opposite alley pairs. He catches and attacks the middle, ending up in a pairs with Bernhardt. As he carries down the alley, Bernhardt gets through and replaces while Wisnaskis passes to Fairman at X and sets a down screen. This helps to create space and let Fairman work for the up to hash goal. He does a great job protecting his bottom hand here on the shot. This next goal versus Rutgers displays the three out set I mentioned earlier, resembling a 1-4-1. Initiating off the wing, Maryland dodges underneath, throws it forward to X and has great backside action in the pairs which allows Christian Zawadzki to find a soft spot for a catch and release shot. 
Note the bass players here playing on a string. As the ball side attackman fades to the back pipe behind the cage, the opposite attackman flashes the middle on a low crease cut. This occupies defenders and is a possible look off of the initial dodge. With their positionless style of play, you often get short stick mismatches or isolation opportunities. Sometimes you have to body up and simply win matchups. Here, Maryland lets Bubba Fairman go to work. He works his defender to create a big time unassisted goal in a big time moment. Similarly, on the opposite side, he rolls back for a backhand finish versus Rutgers. Here, they find Wisnowskis with a short stick matchup who rolls back, gets underneath, and dives across the cage for an acrobatic finish. Lastly, I mentioned previously how the bass players play on a string, often one behind the net and one low at the top of the crease. They play off of each other and can replace into the high pairs. Here, Wisnowskis and Lewis Dubik work together nicely. As Wisnowskis draws a slide carrying towards X, Dubik is able to sneak up to the back pipe before the second slide gets down in time for a nice cross crease dunk. In a similar fashion, they score off a low crease flash. One attack holds the back pipe while the other cuts to the ball. No attack one was on the ball side pipe, which allowed the Dodger space to work and eventually find the open cutter. Thanks for tuning in this week and hope you enjoyed the breakdown on the Terps. Be sure to subscribe and follow along on Instagram for continuous content every single week. Thank you.